Ready for a cruise? There's just enough room on the narrowboat for you to join us for a real-time cruise up the Oxford Canal. Morning, how are you? Got a good week, haven't you? We timed it just right. Perfect, right? No fast cuts or quick edits. In this video, you'll enjoy nearly every minute of canal time on this summer cruise. We're Wendy and Lawrence. Today's cruise is just under two miles, traveling from Shipton Weir Lock, number 41, to Pigeons Lock, number 39. Pearson's guide describes this part of the Oxford Canal as arguably the most charming and sublime, drifting through the delectable landscape of the Cherwell Valley, like something out of the slow, gorgeous heart of a concerto. Good morning. How are you? So we need to take our time because we need to let uh, we need to let Wendy get to the lock and start setting it before we get there. And we are going to Shipton Weir Lock, number 41. That's the first stop of the day. And as mentioned earlier, it's a diamond lock. So this will be the first time that we've done a diamond lock. Not that our experience with locks is extensive, but um, so this is going to be interesting. Um, I'm glad we went down and looked at it before. Here is the diamond shaped lock. My understanding, and I could be wrong, is they are known for being on the Oxford Canal. Something to do with water management. Uh, I'm not sure. I've heard a couple different theories. And this is actually connected to River Cherwell, which is why we heard people telling us they were refilling the canal. They were coming up here to do it, which makes perfect sense now. But here's something that maybe everyone can help us with. So this is basically, not technically a switchover bridge, but the bridge allowed the horses to change from one side of the towpath to the other, as you can see. And I'd always thought, seen, read, that they needed to have bridges that had um, a break in the middle so the rope could go through. But I don't see where you would do that here. So if Wendy has this lock set, and I can pull straight in it. We all need to get her in a hole and just give her some sort of award because <laughs> that would be amazing. The thing about Wendy is she takes her stuff very seriously and she's her own worst critic. If she can't um, get something right, uh, she'll hammer away at herself until she can get it right. And. Uh, So sometimes the frustration you're dealing uh, or you're working through with her is not necessarily, she's mad at you. She's upset at herself. You know? Yeah. I'm definitely oversteering this part, trying to get lined up to the lock. Do you ever do that when you first started? Do you ever steer a lot when you're trying to get the thing pointed in a straight line? We're not constant cruisers yet, so we don't have radios to chat over any type of distance, but we do have cell service in England. Hey, beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, it's doesn't seem to be any water moving, but I can't get this gate to open. So you want me to come help you? Want, yeah, more up to the center line and come help me look. Okay. Okay. Love you. 
We've been warned over the last few days by lock buddies that diamond lock could be a challenge, so we sort of expected it would need both of us. This is only our third day driving the narrowboat, or steering as it's traditionally called, so I need to back up for a clear run at the mooring. And she did it! We, we nearly decided to moor the boat up. Um, impatient Americans. But uh, Wendy worked out that the water level was just leveling out. Actually, it worked out well. When I backed up to realign myself to come in the lot uh, to moor, I gave myself a little bit of room and more or less straightened myself up to come in for the lock. We're wearing wireless microphones, so we can hear Wendy taking notes on her iPhone. Okay, so this is the diamond lock, which is at bridge number 218. We've been told by Paul that this is the one where he had to actually use a rope tied to the boat to open up one of the lock gates, so we were a little worried. But basically, when you come up and you assess the water level, it looks like as Lawrence is entering, I should have just been able to open the gate, but I couldn't, and I double-checked the other side, and this was definitely as level. So I opened up the paddles anyhow, just to let a little bit of water out, but I had to wait quite a while. I kept testing it. It was at the point where Lawrence was gonna come in, park and help me, but it finally leveled up. You, could, you couldn't see the water moving, which is why I was starting to get some concern. But it was enough, so I was able to open it. So now he's entering the lock. So once he's through, I close the gate. Then I lower the paddles and lock the paddles down. And then I will go over to the other side. And I am clear, baby. Are you clear? Clear. Good. One of the challenges of a diamond lock is all the room. Long, narrow locks help hold the narrow boat in place. But in the diamond lock, it's easy to drift around and a challenge to keep the narrow boat lined up with the exit. This lock holds so much water, it can take some time to work through it. So we've squeezed it all together into the three parts of negotiating a lock. There's the beginning, working out what needs to be done and starting the process. The middle, waiting and wondering if you can make the process move along any quicker. Not yet. No, it looks like it's close though. Yeah, so the bridge is only half attached that goes across. I yeah, I walked across it this morning. Yeah, I could hold on to those, but what if they slip and start spinning? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's the end. At least you hope it's the end as the impatience starts to grow. It doesn't help the morning is starting to heat up. I think I'm gonna have to go across and open it.
Yay! Look at you! I love you. You're my hero. I am? You don't have to save children. You don't have to rescue puppies. You're my hero. All right, well, I'm going to need a butt rub on this butt, on this cheek. I'm not going to pay you extra because you show me your ass. Because I definitely pulled a muscle. <laughs> It is warm. I'm going to go down and back up for you. We'll show you about 85% of everything that happens on this two mile cruise, but we'll take out the times of mooring up and organizing ourselves, which quite frankly is slower than locks and certainly less interesting. By the way, you're welcome. baby well done honey I was dying of heat stroke out there what's that honey I was dying of heat stroke out there yeah, it was it's getting a little warm so we're on the river Churwell which is odd because again everything I know about narrow boating I learned from YouTube books too but there you go um, I always thought you had to wear a life vest when you got on the, on the river. Um, I might have to stop talking to you because we have a boat coming up and I need to focus. We have a boat coming up, baby. And that's the other thing. I haven't seen other people wearing life vests coming off the river. So, I don't know. Again, these comments are going to be so full of your knowledge telling us stuff. Um, just curious. We need to know this when we uh, live on our boat. Watch out, I'm going to, there's going to be some trees over here. So just watch yourself, I don't want you to get whacked. Camera, try to pull them out for the just move the branch for the camera. Oh. There you go.
do around the bend uh -huh. where that one boat was uh, moored. Moored. If you further down, there's another boat that's moored because I saw it as I was walking through the bushes. Yeah, for them to get in there though, they had to reverse in. I know. Drive in. Yeah. But I thought that was interesting because I bet you that's not allowed to be moored. Mooring back there. I'm pretty sure. Regular guests may remember we asked about avoiding the abundance of stinging nettles along the canals in our narrowboat questions video. And here's a great example of just how prolific they can be. Bushes and bushes of them. If you haven't seen this video, we've linked to it above and below. You want to tell everyone about your experience in the lock? Is there anything to share or was it fun? Uh so this is the diamond lock that our new acquaintances, Paul and Susan, had warned us about. Um, however, I noticed that it's because although it looked even, it actually wasn't even. So when I tried it the first time and it didn't open, I thought, well, let me just wait a while. But in the meantime, I do encourage you if you're a certain age, like us who are old, you should probably do some stretching exercises because <laughs> uh, I think I pulled, slightly pulled my sciatic um, on one of my butt cheeks. It's a little sore, but aside from that, I can still walk and move about. So I think we're all good. So I probably waited another five minutes and it opened like butter. Uh, so I think that's probably what happened to our uh, acquaintances is they uh, they probably again it looks fairly even and uh, um, it didn't actually look like water was actually filling because when you look at the lock uh, you can actually see sort of little swirls of water so I'm sure when I tried it like none of that was happening so but that w that was the key and then on the other side once he got through and I went over to the other side. It is a, a double paddle, which means that you open one paddle and then you cross this little tiny bridge uh, to get to the other paddle. Well, that little tiny bridge was basically askew and look, looking like it wouldn't hold my weight if I went across. So I tried to just open one paddle and hopefully that would fill the lock. It just means that you have to wait longer. Uh, but again, that didn't work, so. I uh, put my life in the hands of that little rickety bridge and went across and opened up the second paddle and there you go. So it was an adventurous way to start the day between it heating up almost instantaneously uh, and uh, the fun nuances. It, it was a great start to the morning. <laughs> So yeah, it, the, the comment, because I'm not sure if it got caught on camera as I went past, and uh, that's unfortunate for you if it didn't, but when uh, Wendy was showing me her bum, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't to get me excited or anything. I, she was telling me, I have to massage it later, <laughs> basically. So uh, now we're on the river. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's oh, opened, and I don't sorry. know if Excuse me, yeah. let's back up a second. Yeah. That's caught on camera so that it would hold up in a quarter law. Which part? The part that you have to massage my oh. right <laughs> butt cheek because it's super yeah. sore. So Anyhow, carry on. I like it as if there's any discussion that it won't happen. Like there's any opportunity that's not gonna happen when all the lights are out and the cameras are off. Maybe. So we're on the River Cherwell, and uh, while Wendy was talking back there, you could actually see uh, some tides, some ripples in the water to show that there was some sort of current, but it's very, very still. And it is windy. I think this is the windy bit that the, um, that the uh, book was telling.
calling us about. So we're going to slow down a little bit and go around. Fun, babe. Someone's parked their boat right as you come off the corner. Oh. Yeah, so I'm basically going to be flipping around and having to do basically a 90 degree turn here. This is going to be fun. Like I said, hopefully there's not another boat coming. We've cut out our casual conversations about friends and other non-canal matters that would be boring at best, if it made any sense at all. Oh, oh we got there's plenty, plenty of room. room. Now I see it close. Yeah. Lots of room. We shouldn't have said that. We should have just said awesome all us. Yeah, we got lots of room here. Oh yeah, as soon as we came around I saw that. And it was funny because right before you said that, I was just going to ask if I should start to practice some driving. But then you said that and I was like, nope. How's it going? Beautiful day. What's that? Oh, yeah, thank you. We, we want our memories. Yeah. You have a good day. Oh, look at all your wood. Look how much wood he's got stored away. Oh, pay attention. Did you hear her shouting back? There's a boat! There's a boat! There's two boats. There's us and that boat. Actually, he's parked really nice. No, he is. He's, he's sort of tucked in. Yep. He doesn't bother anybody. <sighs> Morning. Someone's working on a serious tan. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah, this is curvy, man. That's where we're going, and we have to take another curve to get there. There's a bridge. You can you can see the bridge. Hopefully, I didn't cut this too wide. Now we got it. Ah! I'm 
not saying it's the perfect turn, but PDC. If you're wondering why this is so curvy, we're officially on the River Churwell. However, the Oxford Canal is a contour canal, meaning it was built to follow the most level piece of ground, and consequently winds its way through the countryside. Uh, it's not a waterfall, but it's water flowing into the river. You can get a shot at it if you like. Wow, I'm glad I came in tight. I don't think this guy is gonna make it. Oh, look at that. He's, God, he's steering this thing like a sports car. That was one nice cut around that corner. <laughs> oh, look at those satellite dishes over there. I wonder what that's all about. Yeah, as soon as we straighten up, baby, you can take over. In front of us. See it? Yeah. I'm not going to be as good as that guy. This is curvy. I'm glad you're not doing this, baby. This is nuts. Uh, come here, stand here. How did the uh, windlass um, sling work? It worked really well because a couple times I was like, oh, I need to put it down. 
And then I thought, no, I have my sling to put it in. And then when I was crossing that rickety bridge to and fro, I was very happy that I had the sling because when I put my windlass in it, I used both hands to hold on to the lock gate so I wouldn't fall in. And you know, because, you know, you and I could see the usefulness of it as soon as we started talking about it, and I got to see it, as I mentioned, on Narrowboat Chef. I wonder why more people don't use them. That's odd. The sign tells boaters to stay right in order to stay on the canal part of the river. Honestly, even with the sign, I nearly went straight under the bridge. I expected a sign on the bridge itself, I guess. The bridge itself continues access from the towpath from one shore to the other. You're going to be getting out on the left side. Up or no? Uh, if you pull me in or I can pull up, I'll tie us up. But yeah, we need to be tied up or I need to hold it. I can hold it. Not only did the bow camera capture a single boater managing the lock and his boat, you can see just how long it takes to empty something as deep as an eight foot lock. We get to see him managing his boat and the flow of water leaving the lock by adjusting the paddles. And this isn't sped up, but everything is kept on canal time.
Wendy wants me to move forward to give the exiting boat some space on the lock landing, but I can't see anywhere to go. A quick kick off the bow and I can cruise into the lock. Okay. 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 Good point. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's in the shade. Not for long. Not good with my funeral. How are you? Good. Good. We're on our way back to Oxford. Oh, you have a rental too? Yeah. Yeah. Same place. Did you have a good trip? So far, yes. Yeah. Cool. How long did you, have you had it? Uh, we started on Saturday. Oh, okay. We only did a little one on Saturday. Oh, okay. We've been right into Banbury. Yeah. And uh, had a half day in Banbury. Okay. It's quite a long, it's a lot smaller than what you think. Yes, we noticed that. I was able right, to get the lock uh, walking, uh, that diamond one, uh, way before the time. The water is raised and lowered through the opening of paddles. In this case, the paddles are built into the ground. It's my job to keep the boat in one place, not too close to the front or the rear gate. The downside of being on the boat is missing out on all the great canal side conversations taking place on the lock itself. You can only stand and watch as the animated conversations carry out in front of you.
The gate can only be opened when the water pressure is equal between the lock and the canal. So they lean on the gate to check for any movement to indicate the water pressure is being equalized. Very scientific. because they're coming through. Oh, nice. Also, he told me the water point is this little brown thing, so you have to keep an eye out for it because if you miss it, you ain't going back for it. Thank you so much. Is this a giant selfie you're doing? I can hear it. A long-term selfie know. with your camera. Oh, I'm not paying attention. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Thank you, thank you. So you're with college, you got you're some college cruisers too? Yeah. Who did your orientation? Michael? Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. He was so good. good. What was your name? What's your name? Nigel. Nice to meet Nigel. you, Nigel. Have a good day. Thank you. So we probably need to double check that map for the water point. Oh, we also said, be careful where you moor because there's a train that goes by at 1 in the morning and starts up at 4, and it was horrendous, he said. Thank you for everything. Nigel's with you guys. He's a rock star. Make sure you don't make him walk the plank. The day warmed up so much, the GoPro facing the shoreline overheated, and it just couldn't record anymore. This happened quite a bit on this trip. Look at this, how it drops off to the left. Well, maybe it doesn't. See, I can't watch all this because I'm watching the canal. Oh, that is so nice. They said that they did, they waited all the way up to Banbury. Uh -huh. And they um, 
They did eight hours yesterday to get close enough so they could make Oxford because uh -huh. they didn't they didn't um, rent it very long. And they said they go that was a bit much. I said oh we're not we're, we're taking it as we go. We're not doing any eight hour cruising thing. Then he said that he goes it's a good thing it's not raining. He goes because it's complete. It's, he goes it's pretty miserable. Your narrow boat experience would have been pretty miserable. Yeah. We're back on the man-built canal, although it would be hard to guess with the natural-looking bank on our right. Something like this, though. I can't do it right now. Unless you want to put it on my head. Thank you, baby. Every time I take my eyes off this or I take my hands off the rudder, it just goes crazy. That's when I screw up. Such beautiful countryside.
Oh, this is so, honey, I, you can, I can look this side. When, you're, when you got your picture, you want to look down here because that is such an awesome shot down there. I can use this side to guide so you're not going to be in my way. Isn't that nice? That narrowboat right there in the... I don't think I'm getting it in, though because it's in the dark. Oh. This is bridge 216A. I think the A is at the end because it was built after the older original bridge, number 216, which is just ahead. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is where the canal goes from expansive countryside to industrial England. You can't be upset by this. After all, industry is the reason the canals were built. Okay. Okay, and what was that bridge number back there? That was like 216, I think. Okay. We think the house on the right may have been a warehouse or small wharf back in the day. It's built right on the water and it would be easy for a narrowboat to pull up, more alongside to load or unload its cargo.
I was so busy working all this out when this happened. Oh, for heaven's sakes. this yeah you got a lot of room on this side thank you I'm gonna try to get back to that side right now there we go I'd rather hit the bank than the yeah. boat okay you good yeah we're good we're set baby thank you I'm still recovering when, of course, there's another narrowboat coming the other way. This was the first fisherman we'd seen on our time on the Oxford Canal. In fact, I don't think we ever saw any others for the rest of the trip. Look at that, you can see a floating workshop on the right. Glancing back, we weren't sure if those were heat lamps to help paint dry or just lights to work under. Oh, you know what? This is where it turns into the arc of like a tunnel of trees. Remember I read about that last night? Uh -huh. Nice, we'll be in shade for a little bit.
look at this unusual narrowboat on the right. The hull seems to swell up as it gets closer to the bow, consuming the cabin. Take a picture? Yeah, please. Just see if the GoPro is working, and if it's not, okay. just play with it till it starts recording. Thank you, baby. This part of the canal is known for the large overhanging trees that try really hard to form a tunnel over the canal. The shade is very inviting on this hot summer's day. I took this opportunity of being alone on the stern to record a piece about the YouTube narrowboaters who have inspired us. You can hear who, what, and when in the video linked above and below. Thank you. I can breathe again. <laughs> so, if you enjoy our narrowboat content, don't forget to check out our other travel videos. You know, if you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon, not only will you never miss one of our videos, it's absolutely free to do. That's right, my friend it will not cost you a penny. 
Let us know if you enjoy the real-time cruising videos in the comments below, along with any thoughts, questions, feedback, you know, all that YouTube stuff. But whatever you do, don't go anywhere. We have another awesome travel adventure starting any moment now. I think there's enough time to grab a drink or a snack though. 